Hey guys, Jimmy here, aka Palette of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Warhammer painting video. Uh, this one is the Dreadblade Harrows from last week's issue of uh, Mortal Realms magazine. But before we jump into everything, as per usual, if you like these videos, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, and drop a comment down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, before we get properly going though, uh, I just want to say this video would have been out a little bit sooner. Um, if I hadn't knackered one of the Dreadblade Harrows up and done it a bit wrong and it doesn't look very good so I need to repaint it and two I was also working on the kind of side projects that I've been going on with for a long long time and I've been painting this Iron Blaster it's not 100% finished yet there are a couple of pieces that need to go on there um, and it, but it's getting there um, which is the main thing for me um, it will soon be done and I'll probably show off it show it off at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, this has been taking most of my time. I've been trying to do as much detail as I possibly can. So kind of explains why I've not been a bit slow getting around to other projects. Anyway, back on to the main subject. So Dreadblade Harrow is that nice mounted unit that we got for the Night Haunt Army um, last week. So this is how I went about getting the look that I've gone for with this. So, mechanic standard grey for your base coat on that base plate. Um, then I'm just dry brushing over some stone vermin fur. Breaks up that one shade of grey quite well. Uh, you can use Agrax Surf Shade if you wanted to, and then it'll give it a nice deep dark look all over if you wanted. Um, and same as you dry brushing anything else over. Um, I also then used Administratum Grey to dry brush over the top, it lightens that grey up a lot, lot more and um, brings out a lot more detail as well when you do a light dry brush. Then going over that mud, all I'm using is Gorefall Brown, um, this will get a wash of Seraphine Sepia later on, um, but it picks out all that grey, breaks it up a lot well and picks out all the, kind of the muddy areas in between slabs and stuff like that and then using a shabty bone over the skull um, and the skulls that are on them bases um, you can do this before you use your seraphine sepia because when you use seraphine sepia you can wash over the skulls as well at the same time then using caliban green over the leaves that are dotted around connected up to that vine and stuff like that and as you can see now I'm using the Seraphine Sepia going in between them cracks uh, and over the kind of muddy areas and I do that over the schools as well. Uh, make sure you go into them eye sockets to give it a lot more depth and darker look. And then using Dryad Bark, picking out all them vines. You can do this with greens if you wanted to. Um, it's entirely up to you. There's no right or real wrong way of doing this type of stuff in all honesty. Then using Iron Breaker, I'm just going over that helmet for that one skull. Gives it a nice metallic look and darker metallic look. Uh, and then you can use Norm Oil over the top of it, which breaks it up a lot more. Uh, and you can do all the little bits and pieces as well. So including painting the roses corn red. You could do them yellow or pink if you wanted to, or even purple. Entirely up to you. Then moving on to the horse itself, and what I do with uh, it's base coated with Corax White as per usual. Then I apply a good couple of layers of uh, Night Haunt Gloom. Uh, you'll have to go quite thick on the top of it because otherwise it dries really patchy. Then I'll just dry brush over the white scar. It's a lighter white than the Corax White, so it gives it a brighter, brighter look especially towards the ends of the tassels that are kind of coming away. Then back onto the shanty bone um, to paint up the ribs, the skull and stuff like that on the horse. And then using the bad and black on the reins. You can highlight that, this with your rays like administrator grey or storm vermin fur or even mechanic standard grey if you really really wanted to. As well, but it picks out the reins really, really well. It gives them a nice dark look. Then, as per usual, over the bony areas, use seraphine sepia. When this dries, it'll give it a nice dark look and it'll go into all them recesses in good areas as well and stuff like that. So, make sure you get into that eye sockets. And 
And then while I'm waiting for that shafty bone to dry, I'm using uh, Calgar Blue, which is kind of like a dull, kind of brighter, pale, kind of palish blue uh, kind of colour. Um, picks out that nice edge on the night on that night haunt bloom though. Um, it looks really really nice. Um, I usually use skin glue which is a lot brighter um, but it works really well. Then now that the seraphine sepia is dry a shabty bone over the certain edges of ribs and stuff like that and kind of like more towards the edge but not quite kind of coating the entirety of the bones and make sure you do the skull as well. Then you've got some fine details on things like the reins, uh, which will be metallic areas, so like rings and kind of clasps and stuff like that. Pick them out using Iron Breaker uh, or Stormhost Silver if you really, really wanted to. Um, and then the others you could use Retributor Armor on if you wanted to, like the studs along the, the actual reins itself and stuff like that. And then onto the rider itself. As you can see, I've painted the blade mechanic standard grey because it helps metallic work really, really well. But what I'm doing for is I'm going for is that lower kind of cloak. I'm using Yandan Yellow Contrast Paint. Uh, you'll apply it. I applied two coats of this um, before I put it all together. Um, gives it a very fiery look, but once it's dry brushed over, it looks really, really quite nice um, and it works quite well. It makes it stand out a lot better than chain rasps and stuff like that as well. And then assembling it onto the horse, um, using Wildwood, which is another contrast paint, uh, I had to use two coats of this, it dries quite patchy in all honesty with just one coat. So two patchy, two coats of this, it works really really well. Um, make sure you spread it across the model and you draw it away from where you initially put any paint. Uh, going over multiple areas will give it horrible brush strokes um, which looks pretty crap. Then the blade of the, the weapon and the helmet are painted using Iron Breaker because it's a good dark metallic colour um, it picks out and it makes it look quite grubby and grey and a bit dingy and stuff like that but for the hilt and the pommel of the sword I used gold retributor armour uh, in all honesty when you do certain techniques with it it can look really really nice whether you're using right and fresh shade as a shading kind of colour um, or even how I will show you in a little bit Make sure you use, of course, a shabty bone on the skull um, if you're going to do it the same way that I'm doing it, or similarly. It makes that skull look really, really nice, and then you can use your seraphine sepia over the top of it. And then over the actual all the metallic areas of that weapon, using Norn Oil, darkens it down really, really nicely, saves you using any kind of brass colours or anything like that, and having to paint two layers of paint essentially. Um, gives it something very very nice to look at um, makes it look really really well and makes it look like it's old and dirty and stuff like that if you wanted to you can use different color shades so you could use you could use like green shades or anything like that so you could use your good old convex pieces um, it's entirely up to you it'll give it a very very much different look if you go for green it stands out a bloody mile uh, it doesn't look that great but it works works really really well on so like um, wood elves and stuff like that on armour for them, which can be pretty handy. Um, other than that, the only other things that, you, that I've done and I've missed steps on here from recording is the edge of a cowl, of the top cowl, is painted using corn red and then dots of Retributor armour and then seraphine sepia over the top of them to kind of dull that all down, um, makes it look quite nice. And then I've highlighted over metallic edges with the same colours that they are used for them so Retributor Armour and Iron Breaker over the sword itself. Um, 
the only other mistake that I've missed out that I haven't done a bit part of a video on is the same as what I've done with other ghosts and night haunt models I've used iron rack skin as a base coat for model flesh and then deep in flesh over the top to, as an edge highlight for things like fingers and stuff like that and that's it pretty much so it's fairly simple to do and um, it's entirely up to you if you do the same way or if you want to do it differently or if you want to tweak things but you can get some really really good results um, the only thing that I'll say is I'm not as happy with the wild wood um, top cowl but it's different from every other models that I've done so far with a night haunt um, and I'm not sure how I'll use it again because um, I'm not sure if I like the wild wood contrast paint and that's it pretty much um, the only other thing I'll say is Games Workshop have opened up their website again so they are now taking orders on models so if you want new models more paints or anything like that you can get them from them if you do want new models though and you want to save a little bit of cash use my link in the description down below it'll take you to Goblin Gaming you'll be able to get some cheaper Warhammer figures from there uh, you may be able to get some paints however they are low on a lot of stock so just be aware of that um, if you use that link as well what you'll get you get around about 20% off the RRP for Warhammer figures um, about 10% off their paints and you can get other bits of pieces so you can use more hobbies for close you can or if you want to try a new game like a song of fire and ice or say like um, you've got a tons so you've got a doctor who game on there you've got hellboy you've got harry potter you've got rumble slam um, and elder scrolls on there as well so you've got loads of stuff that you can get on with um, and try out if you wanted to um, they do them all a little bit cheaper so it's worth giving them a shot if you use the link down below, it earns me a little bit of cash that I can use on their website. Um, but this is not a paid subscription, paid thing. It's entirely up to you if you use it or not. You don't have to. But it does help me out. Um, <laughs> having said that though, guys, thank you very much for watching. And um, if you've made it through so far through the video, as always, drop a like, hit that like button, subscribe. Drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But for now, I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.